Good morning. Today is Wednesday, December the 6th. So happy Wednesday to everybody. And welcome to Coffee and Jesus here at Abundant Life Homestead Ministry, where every weekday, Monday through Friday, we take another step in the journey we call Connections Bible Study. The Connections Bible Study is based on the Revised Common Lectionary. And each day, Monday through Thursday, we take a look at a passage. And on Friday, we find the connection between those. And today is Wednesday, is what mm -hmm. you said. So mm -hmm. on Wednesdays, we look at the Old Testament. Today's Old Testament passage is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. As we go through and read our passages, we... Uh, just jot down anything that seems important, anything that jumps out to us, anything that um, touches us in our lives today, and uh, then we sit down and discuss those things. And if you feel so inclined, if you uh, come up with thoughts and ideas on your own from the passage, put them in the comments section below. We'd love to see what, uh, what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So we've alluded to this passage. Yes. In previous days. Monday we referenced this passage. So we're into we're in Isaiah here and Isaiah chapter forty begins what would be the uh, messianic section of Isaiah that really uh, I believe lasts pretty much to the for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the book. So today, that's not what you had up, is it? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Isaiah chapter forty. That version. Mm hmm. Okay. I thought I thought the title <laughs> was the same. That's why I was. Um, I'm reading from the um, New Living Translation today, and this section is titled "Comfort for God's People." Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her, tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting. Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, Shout. I asked, What should I shout? Shout that people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful <coughs> arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Okay. And that's a long, long passage, longer than normal for, for this study. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified, and it's, they title it, The Greatness of God. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her time of compulsory service and warfare is finished, that her wickedness has been taken away since her punishment is sufficient, that she has received from the Lord's hand double punishment for all her sins. A voice of one calling out, Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Remove the obstacles. Make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised, and every mountain and hill made low. 
and let the rough ground become a plain, and the rugged places a broad valley. And the glory and majesty and splendor of the Lord will be revealed, and all humanity shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. A voice says, Call out, prophesy. Then he answered, What shall I call out? The voice answered, All human humanity is as frail as grass, and all that makes it attractive, its charm, its loveliness, is momentary like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Most certainly all the people are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our, Lord, of our God stands forever. O Zion, herald of good news, get up on a high mountain. O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Listen carefully, the Lord God will come with might and his arm will rule for him. Most certainly his reward is with him and his restitution accompanies him. He will protect his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm. He will carry them in his bosom. He will gently and carefully lead those nursing their young. There's some interesting um, differences mm -hmm. in that version. Mm -hmm. um, I like the sufficient. Since her punishment is sufficient. Yep. And, and that that's something I... Uh, I didn't write too much about in my notes, but I noticed, uh, you know, speak, when, since you bring that up, since her punishment is sufficient, that she has received from the Lord's hand double punishment for all her sins. You know, many translations just say she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Mm -hmm. The NLT, what, how was that written? In? Mm. The Lord has punished her twice, twice over. over. Well, like I said, mo most translations just say that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And it, it, I kind of took it in a very different light, not double the punishment or being punished twice over. Um, if if you look, there's there's really two meanings to the word double. One means twice as much, but the other means to fold in half so that the two sides mirror each other and you know like you well we, we kind of use the phrase you double over in pain which isn't necessarily making it us mirror ourselves but like when, when the tabernacle was built they were ordered to to double the cloths so that they mm -hmm. were the same on both sides and if you if you look at it in that light talking about how her punishment is sufficient and God being a just God, then it's saying that your punishment has mirror is equal to a mirror to your sins, and, and that made a lot more sense to me because if 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 God was to punish twice for the sins, then He would not exactly be a fair and just God. So I, I despite what that this one includes punish double punishment, and that one says punish twice over. Most of the translations I've read just say the double, and I, I kind of take that other meaning from it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I really struggle with that. That's why I didn't put it in my notes, because I'm like, well, I read it like this, but I don't see it like the way I read it, like in in this one. But I really like so many other areas of this translation. Mm -hmm. But that's why we read so many different translations. We We get the different perspectives of it, so... You just wish the Passion Translation was in had the Old Testament as well. <laughs> well may, maybe one day somebody will translate the Old Testament in the in the voice of the Passion. <laughs> okay. So I struggled today. So what do you got? Okay. Well, I really only got two big points that I pulled out of this. Say this is. Being a long passage, this is one that we could have taken a hundred different directions or lots of little pieces out of. Um, a big one is um, in, in verses 3 and 4, talking about prepare the way for the Lord, mm -hmm. which uh, we know is uh, prophetically 
um, talking about John the Baptist and and how and with him coming and preparing the way for the Lord, calling out from the wilderness. But the actual thought of prepare the way for the Lord, it it kind of kind of paints this picture, you know. When, when kings would travel, there would always be this entourage way out ahead of them, like an advance mm-hmm. party, smoothing out the road, cleaning off the road to, to make this nice, smooth path for them. So and, they're not uh, going through yeah. hitting the rocks. And, 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 and you know, I, Isaiah here really gives us a good picture of it with every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made lower rough ground become plain the rugged places a broad valley so there's Mm -hmm. there's no hard ups and downs and making a smooth path and and we know especially with 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 this and with john the baptist you know preparing the way for the lord was really preparing your heart for the lord you know even though we get the picture of preparing for the king going down the highway it was really preparing your heart for your for the lord and you know, I, I, there's no one size fits all to solution to preparing our hearts for God or for God's work in us. We each come with several issues, the mountains, the valleys, the rough areas that we need worked out and no two paths are ever the same. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's no, no matter how we get from beginning to walking with God none of us ever come the same path Mm -hmm. and you know God has a different or a personal work to do in every one of us to smooth our hearts out and it is a really I really like that analogy of preparing the way for the Lord meaning our hearts you know it's it's never really meant the road itself it's just that that's it's a wonderful analogy for it, too, I think. Mm-hmm. I like the comfort. Um, coming from where we are right now, uh, in Isaiah especially, they've, they've been through a lot. Mm-hmm. And God's and saying, comfort, we're comforting you. You're, you've been through all this, but... Your sad days are gone. You've made it through, and now your comfort comes. Will come, anyway. Right. Well, it's it's not over yet. No, it's not over (laughs) yet, but... um, In in the terminology here, it says your comfort has come. But... um, but the ultimate comforter is coming, and this is um, a bit of a foreshadowing of what is to come, prophecy. And no matter how bad it's been, what is coming is unimaginably good. And Because um, one of the things that happens right before this is Isaiah prophesies about how basically all of the Jews are going to be exiled into Babylon. Mm -hmm. We've, we've spoke about that before. And, but, you know, we, we remember that it's, it's those times of stress and distress are the times that we need comfort. We don't need Mm -hmm. comfort when tomorrow looks like it's going to be an amazing day. Why? What? You you don't. I don't need comfort when tomorrow's going to be Mm -hmm. an amazing day. There's some bad things coming. Yeah, this is when you need comfort, and uh, God provides that comfort. Mm -hmm. He just spells it out here. Yeah. What's your next point? Um, getting into all things pass away. Um, this is one we read in a, a couple of the... Is it the Gospels or was it in Peter? 
it wasn't in this week's verse from Peter, but it was in Peter about the 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 same analogy as the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Or the some the grass withers, the flower pass away, but God's word shall never pass away. Mm-hmm. And you know we we the the God's word definitely endures and has endured for for thousands of years you know there have been mm-hmm. so many times and we're, we're even in a, in a time right now where you know like we said they're they're, they're calling it a, a post-christian age where there are fewer christians than there are the the Christians are no longer a majority. They're becoming very quickly becoming a minority, and from all sides, God's word is being attacked. And the thing is, it's not the first time it's ever happened. There mm-hmm. there have been emperors and kings and that that have tried to destroy the Bible. There there have been great philosophers who and visionaries who said in a hundred years people will be asking what was the Bible, you know, and those, all things pass away, including every past effort to destroy or silence God's word, God's word, efforts made today will pass just the same, so I ask, are we focused on efforts that will pass, or the one that won't? Mm Mm-hmm. And that that kind of goes with, along with uh, the verses from Peter this week. Mm-hmm. We, we prioritize the things that will pass away. We should be prioritizing things that will pass away far below things that can be saved. Mm-hmm. I go into the sheep analogy. Um, you usually do. Yep. Um, we were talking again <laughs> yesterday. I don't even remember. Yeah. Not we, but at work, um, uh, sheep are extremely dumb animals mm-hmm. and <laughs> they need no constant supervision and care because left to their own, it's not pretty. And <laughs> no, no animal on earth is less capable of caring for itself than sheep. If really it was not for humans, there wouldn't be there would be no sheep. They would they would eat. They would have a certain distance that they would go. They would eat everything there and then starve to death <laughs> because there would be no one to move them on. Mm. They would wander off. Their babies would all get always get killed for wandering off because there would be no one to bring them back to the flock. They're they're not intelligent creatures. Right. So this friend had talked about she was getting sheep and she was so excited because they're sheep. They're going to be Oh, they'll come up to me. It'll be so fun. I was like, no, that's goats. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yes, it was terrible. <laughs> they, they were nice and she, okay, but they were so they're, stupid. And um, they're, they're where Mike and Terry lived. They're, at one point, the farmer had taken some of that pasture and put sheep there. And sheep get stuck in every hole. Mm-hmm. They trip over little rocks a fence that is literally 18 inches tall, barely, not even full length of their legs can keep them in Mm -hmm. because they will stand there and look at it and think it's a barrier. (laughs) And yes, they're, they're... But I think it's good that the sheep analogy is used so often because um, we tend to have a loftier idea ideal for ourselves that we're we know so much and we can do so much on our own but we can't no no. we um left to our own devices we're a mess i i I like to view the whole sheep thing from just that we can't do it on our own Mm -hmm. it just that's all there is to it we are frail we are dumb we can't do Mm -hmm. it on our own and um I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> you. 
because I didn't write down what I wanted to say. Mm. I was going with it. But his, uh, but when Jesus comes, he carries us. I like the carry analogy. He carries mm -hmm. his lambs in his arms. Um, because, and the lambs, it brings the sheep even further down to not just the stupid animal, but the babies mm -hmm. of the stupid animals. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and the babies need extra care. And I see the lambs in this passage as the new, the new Christians, the ones that have just found Jesus. They need the extra care to mm -hmm. show the love and help them get a good foundation so that they can keep going. And um, I don't know, I'm just seeing so much, uh, so much in the sheep. And it's hard to get it fit it all in because you were already at twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and the, the the analogy with with the lambs and you know carrying them in his bosom or like your your NLT said car holding them close to his heart. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's the same thing. That goes back to the uh, the comfort that you were focused mm -hmm. on earlier. You know, most every other part of the body, the the shoulders, where you would think of a uh, a, a shepherd's sling a, an adult sheep you yeah. know or or you know your legs your arms most other parts of the body are signs of strength mm -hmm. but the bosom is love holding those little babies is the comfort mm -hmm. and yeah it's showing that jesus is coming you know not not only to to keep us in line because we're dumb and wander off but but to give us that comfort mm -hmm. and show us the way and that there is more mm -hmm. that love is the center and what love needs to be our focus and I think that's all I had yeah that, that's a whole lot more you than lost all me I a had. Few times. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. And, um, there was a small note here. Uh, shout from the rooftops, shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Um, the shout to Zion from the mountaintops, shout it louder to Jerusalem. And you see that as they yeah. they've gotten a little hard hearted and needed the extra comfort and hey, we're here. Gotcha. Good news is here. God is coming. Okay. All right. That's all I got. That's all I got. Okay. Um, most of the prayer requests we have right now are, um, for loss. There's a lot of loss in this season. Anything else? Nothing new. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words of comfort and encouragement and hope. And, because we are the, uh, the sheep that needs your love and comfort and guidance. And um, Jesus, the shepherd, holding us close and guiding us on our way and knowing that we're never alone. And especially in this season that we're in now, there's, Lord, there's so many people that has, are enduring a loss and missing important people from their lives. And we just ask that you bring them comfort and peace during this time and through the coming months. And just help them to feel your love as they continue on without their special people. And be with everyone that's watching and listening. And help us all to be your light in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, leave them in the comment section below. 
anything you would like to share with us individually that you don't want made public, send to our email account at ministry.alh at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, we get into our wisdom passage. Wisdom passage for this week is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13. Interesting breakup. Interesting breakup there. But. I think we've touched in Psalm eighty five in the last year. We just go back and forth so yeah. often. <laughs> <laughs> so that's to look forward to tomorrow. Any last minute thoughts? Rabbit holes to jump down, squirrels to chase? I don't believe so. Uh we did didn't circle back to the advent. No. Um but we are going to leave that up okay. to the, we'll just follow with the pastors okay. are posting. Okay. So if you're interested, just uh, tune into the Facebook page. Is it just a Facebook page? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Pastor Neil posted something on Monday. Okay. So check out the Southside Nazarene one. Facebook page if you want to look more into that uh, joy, is a joy of the ever longing heart. The, uh, Advent series we're doing that we're following. The joy of, of every, every longing, longing heart. heart. It's a uh, Advent the devotional by Dan Boone. <laughs> All right. One of my favorite authors. So, on uh, Monday and Thursday, I believe, is when the pastors are posting. Okay, and then the sermon series Sunday. Right. Is it They're just making this? videos on yeah. Mondays and Thursdays. Okay. There we go. So, all right. I don't have anything else. Do you? Nope. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for studying along with us. We love you all. We hope you have a blessed day. And we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. <laughs>